All right, let's get this show on the road. Hello. I'm here. All right. Hi, my name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. Um, thanks for thanks for being here, guys. Thanks for being here. A few things to talk about today. Uh, firstly, I think I fixed my internet. Yes. Having so many less problems now. Things are good. Knock on wood though. Fingers crossed. It stays that way. <laughs> I really need it to stay that way. Oh my god. Um, other than that, uh, I kind of took the week off from writing, which was bad. I was being lazy. Um... So I'm going to do something a little different today, uh, rather than just doing another editing stream, uh, which I will do, uh, keep working on Fear the Siren, but I wanted to do something a little different, mix things up, get my juices flowing, creative juices flowing, um, and, you know, do something fun, push, push forward, as it were. So yeah. My plan for today is we're going to talk about interactive fiction, visual novels, uh, fighting fantasy, choose your own adventure, uh, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my plan for today. Uh, I've been thinking a lot, uh, for those who don't know, uh, I have a VR system. HTC Vive, it's awesome, fully recommend it, I know it's a huge price point, all that stuff, but it's really, really cool. So I've been thinking about that a lot, and I've been thinking about what doors VR opens up in terms of storytelling, in terms of narrative building. Um, I played the uh, LucasArts, sorry, excuse me, uh, Lucasfilm uh, game that they just released. And it was really cool. It was super short, uh, but it was really cool having that, that Star Wars crawl right there in front of you in the VR space and having the Millennium Falcon fly over your head and, and stuff like that. Um, it was pretty neat. And, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that. And I've been thinking that I would really like... I've always been into game design. I mean, for those who are following earlier episodes, where I, you know, did some board game design on stream and that kind of stuff. I, I love doing that. Um, I have a few other prototypes and things that in my, in my project binders. So, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to think about... Um, VR games, interactive storytelling, um, visual novels, doing, uh, I've always wanted to write a visual novel. It's one of those things where you, it's really hard to write a visual novel by yourself. Uh, it's much easier to write like interactive fiction and that kind of thing. Um, of which there's a lot of really cool stuff as well. But yeah, it's, it's just a thing that I want to do. So I figured today that I would start with that. I'd start with doing some fun, uh, interactive stuff. You know, getting myself in that mindset of, of what kind of projects I want to work on. Build up. Build into something bigger. Uh, discuss the mediums. Discuss the available mediums. Discuss the genre. Discuss all that cool stuff. Um, and, and I hope you guys will accompany me on that journey as it were um, so yeah is choose your own adventure actually copyrighted is that a thing let me uh flip over to my main screen there
Huh. I did not know that. I mean, I definitely own some. I also own some of these <laughs> Usborne Puzzle Adventure books uh, as well. And I'm pretty sure I've read some Give Yourself Goosebumps. Interesting. That was really cool. I didn't know that. I've learned something. Um, yeah, um, I would definitely say Choose Your Own Adventure has entered the lexicon. Uh, because I don't mean, yeah, because we don't mean you're writing a, a, that book, like that series, that copyright. It means that you're writing that style, right? Uh, Yeah, like Photoshopping or Google. Uh, I Googled it. I mean, Google is a copyright. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I uh, gotta love Zork. I love me some Zork. Oh, I totally... Uh, I forgot to update this. Man, that's lame. Creative writing... Game design. Interactive. So yeah, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about. I spent a few minutes just talking about what what I'm familiar with. Uh, and maybe you guys can talk a little bit about what you're familiar with as well. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to kind of have a little bit of an overview and then I'm gonna jump into some more practical stuff. But uh, yeah, choose your own adventure and all those style things uh, have, a, have a common origin in sort of the early days of computers, uh, interactive fiction, uh, stuff like that. When did this start? 1980s? Yeah. Like it was all kind of in the 1980s. Uh, as you can see here, Zork. Zork was, was the game. The game that kind of put, started adventure games, started text based video gaming, um, for a lot of people. Uh, Zork is extremely difficult. <laughs> and is really, really big, much bigger than it gives you at first impression. It was developed into a series as well. But yeah, um, the idea is, is that you as the reader are immersed in the story. You get to make decisions. You choose the outcome. I mean, choose your own adventure. It's literally in the title. Um, and while I am familiar with Zork and I am familiar with Choose Your Own Adventure, those were a little bit, um, I didn't know about Zork until I was in my teens, but I am fairly familiar with it now. Um, and I love adventure games. I play a lot of the old uh, LucasArts games. I play a lot of uh, hidden object adventure games. Huge fan of Telltale. Telltale, I would, mm, Telltale I love so much. They are, they are just always pushing. They're always just pushing the boundary. And I love companies who do that. I love uh, developers and storytellers who do that. Because uh, like most artists, it's, it's, you don't want to stagnate. You don't want to just do the same things. Um, and, and Telltale's really been successful because of that. Where, you know, they made the Sam and Max games and those are awesome. But when they started making like, the Walking Dead games, uh, what else, uh, Poker Night, um, at the inventory, uh, uh, um, that werewolf one that I still haven't played, A Wolf Among Us, that I really need to play, they, they push, and it's really showing, and I love that, 
Um, there's a lot of the idea of choose your own adventure uh, in interactive fiction delves deeply into role playing games, uh, mostly because that's where it, it sort of started in, in the fantasy genre. Um, which kind of leads me to the the books that really put it on the map for me, which were Fighting Fantasy by Ian Livingston and Sam Jackson. Uh, or sorry, Sam Jackson. Steve Jackson. <laughs> uh, Steve Jackson of Steve Jackson, Jackson Games, the guys who make Munchkin uh, and all that, uh, all that stuff. Um, he's a game designer. And he's been around forever. He, he made, he's made some classic games and, and a lot of stuff that's lasted. But yeah, um, Fighting Fantasy. It's, they're really cool. They're like a self-contained solo RPG. There's some dice rolling for combat. There's inventory. They give you a little character sheet. Um, I love them. They're really, really creative. Uh, they've done a variety of genres. Uh, in fact, some of my favorite ones were the science fiction and superhero ones they did. Uh, really, really cool. Really cool. Very different. Um, all of their books have a very unique flavor, um, which is surprising because they're all, you wouldn't think that, you wouldn't think that, uh, they would be that different. All in all, um, they put out, I think over 150 game books. That sounds right to me. I could be wrong. Yeah, this is not nearly all of them. These are the reprints, by the way. Uh, they started reprinting them in the around, I think, 2006 or something. Hey, McKelly. Uh These are fighting fantasy, man. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read one of these, but they're basically, uh, like I was saying, they're a self-contained uh, RPG with a character sheet and dice rolling and like very, very basic RPG elements, but really, really cool. Uh, really creative. Um, they're done in that choose your own adventure style where you, you make choices as a character. Um, so really, really cool. I keep saying they're really cool, but they are these, these things like define my childhood. I used to get them from the library. Um, I own a ton of them. Uh, the originals, not the reprints. Uh, like I own, uh, I definitely own Starship Traveler, uh, I own a bunch of sorcery, uh, which was a specific series within them, and we're gonna bring, uh, we're gonna bring that up a little bit later, um, Death Type Dungeon I definitely have, um, so yeah. Love Fighting Fantasy. Fighting Fantasy is kind of, for me, one of the, the the pinnacles of interactive fiction. What interactive fiction does really, really well, uh, and that's putting the reader, uh, putting putting the player, putting the reader in in the story, where you make the choices. You can be good or evil or whatever. Um, it's really up to you. Uh, and Fighting Fantasies spawned a whole like series of online things of trying to replicate that, of writing our own. Uh, I remember being 14, 15 years old and like trying to write my own books uh, using nodes and graph paper and, and all kinds of ridiculousness. Um, I was very naive, but yeah. Uh, so there's a ton of, like, these are all, uh, these are, none of these are the, uh, from the original series. They're all, uh, unofficial books, but they're really cool. Um, this project's been around a long time. Uh, I've known about them for ages. So yeah, I love that stuff. And... Yeah. Sorry, just forming some thoughts. Um, how many did they make?
Okay. Um, they published 59. Sorry, 60. So I was wrong with my 150, but whatever. They published a lot of them. Uh, and it says here that they... Uh, They kind of got uh, blown up by computer games, which is not surprising. <laughs> um, but yeah. So on that note, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Uh, so. A few years ago, and one of the, there was a humble bundle, uh, which published uh, had a bunch of mobile games, and it had the two games made by Inkle. Inkle is a British studio, uh, very small. I think they only have like six employees or something. I'm not entirely sure about that, but that's what I remember. Uh, they've won a bunch of awards for stuff. But they specialize. In making phone apps for interactive fiction, they made this really really cool version of uh, Around the World in 80 Days, uh, and they made a uh, the first three books from the Sorcery series. There's five books in the Sorcery series. First three books so far, uh, excellent, incredible. Um, you can see here, it's it's the book in a visual format where each of these nodes is a page in the book that you would have had to read. Um, and you do have to read them, but it gives you that visual representation and all those cool things. I love what they did. Um, absolutely love it. I played these for ages. Um, and 80 Days is also excellent. 80 Days is really cool because 80 Days was, like, Around the World in 80 Days was not, uh, was not originally a, a Choose Your Own Adventure game. Um, it's really neat. There's lots of, uh, your choices matter. Uh, you have travel times and you have to take trains and fly and, and all kinds of things. And there's strange science fiction elements and goes off the rails really interesting um i love it i love this stuff sam's heard me talk about these a ton um but yeah i absolutely what Ingle, love what inkle's done but inkle designed this thing called inkle writer and that's what we're going to be using today but inkle writer is basically a a very easy freeform way of writing interactive fiction uh, and I'm going to go over kind of the parts of that when we get into it. But it's really cool, and they made it so that if you're a developer, uh, if you get in contact with them, you can actually use their output in order to uh, drive your game. Uh, their most famous user is the Banner Saga, uh, which is a big thing on Steam. Um, so yeah, like... It's, it's used by people who make games, and I love it. Uh, other things to look at are Inform7 is a very popular uh, interactive fiction uh, software. Uh, and then you have the, inter the visual novel stuff, um, which is a whole other ball game, but it's very related. So this will be the, kind of the last part of my little mini lecture today. But visual novels are a big thing in Japan. Uh, they kind of come for, from Japan, or most of the ones we talk about do. Uh, again, a form of adventure game. It's got pictures and characters, but at the same time, it's all text-based. It's reading a story, reading a character's inner thoughts, um, dialogue choices. In a lot of ways, I mean, it's similar to what Mass Effect did, or uh, Dragon Age, or uh, the the various Bioware titles with that sort of you know dialogue choices matter and they change things. Um, visual novels are very famous for their 
branching narratives for having multiple endings and unlocking all the different endings. Um, especially really cool ones that, like, in order to get the true ending, you have to unlock a bunch of other endings, specific endings, or, like, different things in order to get them. Um, and, yeah. Thinking about it now, and this is kind of why I wanted to, to talk about these, um, is that there's an element, there's a strong element of replayability in interactive fiction. You go back and you do it again. You try new things. Um, like that's, that's a big, it's a big part of what it does. You know, you, uh, you have a save file or you flip back to the page you're at before and you make a new choice. You have those options. Um, so yeah. And the big one, of course, for the big software for making uh, visual novels is RenPy. Um, they're kind of the big software for that. They're not the only one, but yeah. So I've been thinking a lot about motion comics, about visual storytelling, about video games, about VR, um, about interactive fiction. And I want to kind of pull out the various elements of those things that are important, that I think are, that are important to what I'm trying to do. Um, Today isn't the today isn't going to be super hardcore. Like we're going to be starting a game project, but really I want to use today as sort of a building block, a getting started on the process of getting to making that project. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into it. I think. Put my name here. It's really cool. So you'll see, <laughs> Mikel is hyped. I was telling about him this before. Um, I've told Sam a little bit about kind of things I thought. Inter interactive fiction is a whole different beast compared to writing regular fiction. It involves a very different mindset. There's not supposed to... It depends on what you're looking at. In a choose-your-own-adventure game, or a choose-your-own-adventure book, there's no true ending. In a fighting fantasy book, there is. But there's actually several good outcomes and mostly bad outcomes. Um... But yeah, you, you, you can't have a true plot in mind. You have to show arcs and show different things and, and let your players explore. Um, it's kind of the important part of, of what we're doing. So this is Inkorite. Inkorite is really cool. It's a very easy way. It's not the only way. Uh, I like it because it doesn't involve programming. And I know programming. I studied programming for several years uh, in high school and in college. So I, I know how to program and that's fine, but not having to think about those things just makes it easier. So this is really cool because I can just add options, add choices. Uh, it tells me when there's uh, not places for those choices. Like it tells me when uh, there's broken links. It tells me various other uh, information about the story. It can show me a map of the story, um, stuff like that. You can get these really cool loops, uh, effects. We're not going to do too much with that because it's not important to what we're doing, but we'll play around and see how it goes. Um, so what kind of story are people interested in? 
when I talk about uh, visual novels, when I talk about interactive fiction, what kind of uh, things pop out at you? What genres, what tropes, what characters, what, what pops out to you as being interesting in those, in those mediums? I never really use C sharp or C or C plus plus like any of the C languages. Um, I'm probably going to learn a lot more of them. I know a lot more about web development and about uh, Java. I know Java fairly well because that's what, that's the stuff I studied. I'm really interested in uh, the programming language D, which is kind of the the next one on the C list, because C is very old. Um, so yeah, uh, detecting mystery, totally big in visual novels. Uh, and adventure games. Uh, detective stories are very big in adventure games as well. Keep in mind that uh, interactive fiction does include adventure games, though adventure games tend to be a lot more linear than the others, but there there's lots of endings in those as well. Uh, fantasy adventure, of course. Fighting fantasy is all about fantasy adventure. Uh, Zork, all that kind of stuff. Uh, dungeon crawlers, yes, definitely. Kind of similar to fantasy adventures, but they're... One of my favorite ones is Death Trap Dungeon, which literally wants you to explore a dungeon and map it out and do all this cool stuff. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, Michael D. It's a uh, it's a successor to the C languages. Um, it's pretty new, but it seems to be getting a lot of support because uh, it does. C plus plus was an addition to C to make it more usable for object orient oriented programming and modern programming techniques. D takes it a step further. Um, not a ton of people are using it yet, but it's it's up and coming. Uh, for sure. So yeah, Tech Mysteries, Fantasy Adventure, Dungeon Crawlers, for sure. Uh, I think of the ever popular uh, dating sim. And I'm, I'm keeping a list here. I, I wanted to kind of write down a lot of stuff, uh, kind of ideas, creativity, flow. Yeah, Johnny, um, that's more of a storytelling technique, but I will write it down for sure. I'm going to write it down as ordinary becomes extraordinary. Could you imagine, McKelly, if Lord of the Rings was done as a choose-your-own-adventure? <laughs> Lord of Crowns, let's start. Um, so one of the other important... Uh, genres to mention is a uh, slice of life because of their very nature of having to have specific event from specific event to specific event uh, interactive fiction becomes very episodic becomes very slice of life it shows you little pieces of someone's story uh, So yeah, um, that's that's an important like in terms of visual novels, it's an important genre to know. Um, 
So, I have five genres here. And in an effort to provoke creativity and because I'm weird and like doing weird things, um, let's say we do all five. We're going to have a fantasy adventure dungeon crawler detective mystery dating sim slice of life. Which actually is known as Bible Black. <laughs> Not Bible Black, sorry. Uh, is known as um, Black Bunny. <laughs> but yeah. One of the um, one of the most interesting visual novels I ever played was a um, cell phone visual novel in which every th every bit of text was through your cell phone um, not like your physical cell phone like you it was like a, it was a computer but it had a picture of a cell phone and you read your emails or messages from that people sent you and what you replied and all that was how it it took input from the player it was very very fascinating um, how, how that all kind of played out. So. Oh, I got it. I got it. Mm, yeah, I got it. So I'm going to grab another couple cards here. I keep notes as we go. This is going to be very important to do because this is going to get lost in a jumble very, very quickly. But here's what I propose. I propose that we do a detective mystery story about uh, law enforcement in a fantasy world who are sent down into a dungeon to solve the murder of a bunch, a group, a party of heroes. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry of Rivertown. Keep in mind, I mean, like any other thing I work on, um, names are transitive. You can change them. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, and, and I know it's cliche, Sam. I'm, I'm just trying to get it flowing. Give us a framework. Start working on a nonlinear story. See what works, what doesn't work and uh, use this as kind of building blocks for a, a much better, less cliche game design. Uh, preferably VR. I really want to experiment with VR storytelling. Um, I also really want to do visual novels in VR and experiment with that, see what things you can do. Um, have 
interesting interactions with text in that space. Um, I just I have so many ideas. <laughs> okay. So here we go. We're going to add this. I suppose I should not name him Jerry. I should say you, second person. I don't know. Maybe. Is that a thing? I feel like you're referencing a thing. So see how I've, uh, every paragraph can be controlled individually in this software. So you can have it so uh, if you're reading it, you'd have to tap twice to get the second paragraph sort of thing, like hitting A on your Game Boy. Um. <laughs> So see, this is a map of what our, our adventure looks like right now. So if we go read, go back. River town was quiet, maybe too quiet. You hit, take a nap, 
it shows you all of it. How do I go back? Hey, Robzy, what's up? We're gonna do that. So we're gonna go back to this go outside. We're gonna add a paragraph here. Here. Thanks for the host, Erica. Appreciate that. So in the effort of trying to be creative, I'm taking a break from writing my short story. Um, so I'm working on interactive fiction. I wanted to, yeah, I can make it bigger. Uh, oh, oh, let's cancel, let's zoom in. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, we're going to interactive fiction um, in the hopes of maybe using it as a basis for a game. Well, a game might be the wrong word. An experience.
I completely agree that video games can be art. I don't think they're all art. I've written several articles for uh, newspapers and stuff, or newspapers, school newspaper and things like that, uh, about the video games as art debate. Um, I think the answer is there are some that are, um, but I think most of them are not. In the same way that a comic book isn't necessarily art but some of them are or novels aren't necessarily all art but some of them are You guys are silly, but I like you. Good software, smart software, warning me about loops. So I looked at this a while ago, so I don't remember exactly. <laughs> Can you send me a link to that, Sam? I really want to check that out. That sounds awesome. Like, <laughs> amazing. Okay, cool. Um, I'll pop up. I'll pop up my Steam. This is correct. Hmm. 
Oh, I found it. Found it. It's called uh, To Be or Not To Be. Anyway. Cool. That looks amazing. I love his art style. Yeah. Ryan North is awesome. Uh, right. I got there, don't worry. I actually, um, I couldn't find anything with Hamlet, so I searched Ryan North and it came up. <laughs> Which is weird, because it says Hamlet in the description, so I don't know how that didn't come up in the first place, but, you know. Right, sorry, yeah, exactly. Um, she's the one who did all those really funny, uh, Yeah, she's really funny. If if she if she's the comic artist I'm thinking of, which I think she is. Uh, what reference time are we in? Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so I'm actually gonna take a break in a minute, and while I'm during the break, I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do the thing I want to do. Um, but yeah, I think. I think I have it here, but I'm gonna have to take a look. Uh, so yeah, let's take a uh, let's take us like a seven minute break, and I will come back at eight o'clock, and we will uh, we will continue on and do some things. Just keep working on it. <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm expecting this to be fast and loose. I'm not trying to. Oh. Oh God. Um, I hadn't thought about it to be honest. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's probably not super medieval, but not Renaissance yet either. Does that make sense? Somewhere in the middle. Sam, be a history person. Tell me about the middle between medieval and renaissance. Inform me. Five minutes. They just kind of blend together. Okay. Uh, five minutes. I'll be back at eight o'clock. All right. Time for a break. See y'all in a bit. 